Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS4 Jailbreak News update. So it's been just over a week since my last update and we have a ton of things to cover. So let's go ahead and dive straight into it. Starting with the release of Gold Hen version 2.4 B17.2. So this update brings support for 10.0 and 10.01 firmwares. So if you are on those firmwares, you can now run Gold Hen. Now I still recommend just updating to 11.0 because it will get the most support over time. However, if you're stuck on 10.0 or 10.01 because you have a broken Blu-ray drive, then you can now run Gold Hen and get your PS4 jailbroken. Now on top of that, there's also going to be support added for 9.60 in future versions. Uh, that is not supported right now, but there are a few people waiting on 9.60 because there is a WebKit exploit, the PS3 WebKit exploit that works up to 9.60 and there's a few people who don't want to update past that in case that WebKit exploit comes in handy for future exploits down the line. So because of that, they are waiting on 9.60 and it looks like Sistro is planning to add support for that firmware as well. But besides that, I haven't heard anything about support for any other firmware so far. It looks like it's just going to be 10.0, 10.01, 11.0 and eventually 9.60. Now a few interesting things about this release. This release did come with a new stage 2 payload to load uh, this version of Gold 10. So you need to be using that newer stage 2 payload to load this particular version of Gold 10. Otherwise, it will crash if you use the older payload for the 2.4 Beta 17 version. It will not work. It would probably just crash your PS4 when you try to load it. And vice versa, if you use the new loader for B17.2 to load the older version of Gold 10, B17, that will probably also cause a crash. So you need to make sure you're using the correct stage 2 loader for the correct version of Gold Hen. Now I've updated my PPPWN GUI program to 1.7.2, which includes these newer payloads for Gold Hen. So they'll be set up to load the latest version, B17.2 or higher. So next, we also just got the release of PS4 Debug from CTN123. So PS4 Debug is now fully supported on firmware 11.0. This is handy for doing remote debugging, so remote debugging software, creating mod menus and mod tools and all of that kind of stuff and cheats like, you know, using the multi-trainer software. Any of that kind of stuff can now be done on 11.0 thanks to the release of PS4 Debug. And PS4 Debug includes more firmwares than just 11.0. It also has support for 10.0, 10.01 and 9.60 although it looks like he's looking for a tester for 9.60 so it probably hasn't been tested officially yet for 9.60 but support has been added so if you are on 9.60 definitely give it a try and see if it is working for you. Next we also got an update to the C++ version of the exploit that we're all using here. So this update included a bunch of additional parameters for adjusting the timing of the actual exploit. This could be useful for people who are having trouble loading the exploit who are getting stuck on certain points. So there's a new timeout option that's been added in seconds waiting for the PS4's response. So you can add a custom timeout and it will time out after that point. You also have the option here, wait after pin. So you can adjust the seconds after the first round of CPU pinning. You can also adjust the milliseconds during the heap grooming process. You can also adjust the PCAP buffer size in bytes. And you can also disable the second PADI request or PADI request. So normally it waits for two of them for better stability. But if you don't have that issue, you can skip one of them and get the exploit loaded a little bit faster. So quite a few new options that have been added there. And you can tweak those timings, adjust those timings, those delays to try and see if you can get better success with the exploit, especially if you're one of those who are running into issues getting it loaded. So that is definitely a handy thing to see there. So next we've got a new Android version of the exploit that's using the C++ version of uh, PPPone. So this version again requires root access just like any of the other Android versions. So you will have to have a rooted Android device to use it, but I'll leave it linked down below. We also have a version of the exploit that can run on JIO routers. I'm not familiar with JIO routers myself, but if you have one, you can run the exploit on that. I also updated the OpenWRT router method to include the 10.0 and 10.01 support with the latest payloads for Gold Hen 2.4 B17.2. And beyond that, we also have the release of the Apollo Save Tool version 1.4.4. This version adds full support for 11.0. It should be able to be downloaded now in the Homebrew store. 
And the other advantage of this is that you should now be able to use it to activate your accounts. So you can offline activate an account with a PSN account ID, which will allow you to use those save files when you resign them and get them working on any of your other retail consoles that use the same profile. So you'll be able to use them on your PS5 or your PS4 that's on the latest firmware so that you have the option to do that now. And this has also added custom save decryption for a bunch of additional games. So those particular games will not normally work with the Apollo save tool, but of course support has been added individually to get those games working. So you can now decrypt those save files for those games. So that has all been added there into the Apollo save tool. So next, we also have the release of Linux payloads for the PS4 on 11.0. This comes from Echo Stretch. So Echo Stretch updated the Linux payloads to support 11.0. Now, interesting thing about this is that they will not work just out of the box right now because we are waiting on a new version of Gold Hen that will fix the bin loader to allow you to load these Linux payloads. And this is basically a problem that we've had for a long time with the bin loader on Gold Hen is that it's never been able to load the Linux payloads. Typically, you would have to load them from, you know, just the WebKit exploits on 9.00, uh, or you'd have to load the Mira loader and have the Mira loader then load the Linux payloads because the bin loader in Gold Hen was never able to actually load them correctly. But Echo Stretch did put out a video showing him running uh, the Linux payloads, which means there is a fixed version of the Gold Hen bin loader that will be able to load these Linux loader payloads. So we'll just be waiting for Sistro to release a new build of Gold Hen that will support this, and then we'll be able to load our Linux payloads. So expect something like a Gold Hen version 2.4 B17.3 coming out at some point, hopefully fairly soon, and then we'll be able to get our Linux loader payloads running. But the payloads themselves have been updated to support 11.0. And last but not least, Caro also updated his host uh, so caro218.ir forward slash 1100. This will take you to a bunch of payloads that Caro converted to run on 11.0. So a lot more payloads are now available. Not all of them have been tested on 11.0. And of course, in order to load them, you will need the bin loader server enabled in Gold Hen to load these payloads. But you can just head to this website in your PS4's web browser and you now have access to all of these payloads that you can try and run. All of the main payloads there have been ported. But again, not all of them have been tested to make sure they're working yet on 11.0. But if you want to give them a try, they are available there. carol218.ir forward slash 1100. So yeah, anyway, that is basically it for this update. Hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.